Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about using your iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. It, it really is amazing what you can do with it now, especially with shortcuts and, and all the stage manager stuff. And so I feel like it's, it's a good year for this stuff. It's been overdue, too. Welcome back to another episode of iPad Pros. We are now at one of my favorite times of the year when Apple starts rolling out their new operating systems. Um, we found out that iPadOS will be in October, so we have a little bit of time before that hits. But iOS will be here soon enough, as well as watchOS and uh, some new hardware as well. And for this episode, I'm pleased to welcome back to the podcast for the fifth time, Matthew Casanelli. If you're new to the podcast, Matthew used to work for the Shortcuts team back when it was known as Workflow. He decided to leave when it was acquired by Apple. This year, we had a two-hour conversation that you'll be hearing the first half of in this episode. In this part, we are diving into the current state of iPad and his relationship to the iPad. We catch up on all of the updates Apple rolled out after the main iPad OS 15 release of Shortcuts last year. And then we begin our discussion on what's new for Shortcuts in iPad OS 16. If you want even more from Matthew, you can dive into the wealth of information he has built up over at MatthewCassinelli.com. If you want to support this podcast, head on over to Patreon.com slash iPadPros. And for just a dollar a month, you can get early access to every episode along with chapter markers in the MP3 files. You can also support the podcast over at Apple Podcasts by subscribing either monthly or yearly. With that, here's the first part of my discussion with Matthew Casinelli. Enjoy. Welcome back to the podcast, Matthew. This is uh, now our fifth time doing this deep dive on shortcuts. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I always look forward to this during the summer because I feel like it's just a good refresher for me oh, every time I say this too. I think <laughs> two months after the OS comes out, it's like, let's go through this all again because that's what iPad Pros do. That's what they do. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I look forward to this every year. It's kind of like, for me, Mark's like, we're getting out of the beta season and we're on to <laughs> shipping OSs mostly. And it's totally, uh, yeah, it's a fun time of year. It's, I, I always appreciate getting a chance to play around with it for a while and kind of feel it out too. So, yeah. So um, to start, uh, you recently published a piece over on iMore and you're doing a lot of pieces over there. So the one I'm referencing here is the best ways to get started with shortcuts on your iPad. And, you know, uh, I, there are some very glowing, uh, just, words about the iPad and then piece, which I just love, uh, <laughs> using shortcuts on an iPad feels like the ultimate expression of the app, uh, is one of the words you use, uh, describe it, which is wonderful. Um, can you dive totally. a bit into what makes shortcuts on iPad so special for you and some of the favorite ways that you're using it uh, currently on iPad? Sure. Um, I mean, I definitely think going back to when it was workflow shortcuts and workflow is what made the iPad Pro and iPad Pro to me um, in a lot of ways. Obviously, the hardware going from just handheld to like all the keyboard and mount uh, Apple Pencil and stuff like that. But just being able to get real work done or whatever the meme used to be, I feel like that's not as much of a question anymore, but um, especially with stuff coming forward. But I think just using shortcuts on the iPad with the touch interface, so the bigger screen versus the phone where you can really get into a deeper workflow versus maybe a six step shortcut. I think that's a place that I really appreciate it. And just having it with you at all times, or I mean, you can't obviously have an iPad with you at all times, right. but may, I have a Mac mini. And so that's more at my desk and the iPad pro can come with me and the shortcut that I build there also works now across all three platforms too, which is pretty cool. So I feel like, um, especially with focus modes now and iPad widgets, I've been using those a lot with shortcuts to show me the right home screen with the right shortcuts widgets on it at the right time. There's a lot of rights. Um, but basically it's the contextual computing device that kind of is the trend in the community type talking about it that way of it does just adapt to what I need it for. And that's really great. And a lot of times too, it just doesn't feel like I'm working when I use that. So I think yeah. that's, especially with shortcuts, that is literally my, <laughs> like what I do for work. And so that's where it's right. like kind of the best of both worlds there. And is multi-window like functional with shortcuts? Like what's the status of that currently? Can you drag actions from like one shortcut to another across like, if it's split screen or if it's stage manager, whatever the case is. 
I don't know about dragging, but you can copy and paste and everything like that. So okay. that's been a big quality of life thing for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, the multi-window stuff made a big difference, especially for me, because I'm so into shortcuts and comparing them and things like that and moving information or like duplicating kind of one from another is always a lot more helpful now than it it was in the past for sure. Um, Just like it didn't, shortcuts doesn't have any sort of like the Mac got all these actions for find windows and move windows to and resize and things like that. And I didn't see anything for stage manager. I actually don't even have an M1 iPad yet because I didn't, I wasn't really sure. I even bought one and returned it. That was kind of the plan originally because I wanted to review it for real but um in the end i was like i don't think i really need this right now it's also just like buying a brand new ipad (laughs) can get really expensive when you already have what's almost the exact same ipad um yeah i think my setup's like a two thousand dollar ipad when it's all said totally that's why like all the stuff requiring m1 is like oh like i totally get why it's necessary but it is like oh man now i have to my i have the i think it's the 2019 12.9 12.9 like the the one where they first got more ram yeah i've been using that one because it is like they it still does everything i need to i can tell short I, I push it with shortcuts for sure but we'll see with stage manager um i i think shortcuts needs to be able to control that stuff because that really that just makes sense if you have a second display even you want to arrange the windows on that totally and you don't want to sit there and do it with your trackpad or something yeah and it's kind of baffling i've been playing around with what is there? And like, if you say, if you're in stage manager and you tell it to open four apps within shortcuts, it just opens those into four separate stages. And it's just so frustrating. It won't even open them in the Mm -hmm. same stage. Like, yeah, they might, I'll say since we said this uh, before we started the show, but there's like rumors that they'll delay iPad OS and they could still add actions for that in the betas. Or, I mean, I feel like at this point, it, I feel like it's more likely to be like 16.1, which right. comes out, probably will come out. I don't know. <laughs> They've done it so weird the last couple of days. It's like three days after the first one comes out or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, 16.1 could launch with iPad OS uh, in October. Totally. So, yeah. It could be the launch version for uh, normal people. Yeah. <laughs> and as you said, yeah. there are window actions for Mac, which makes it all the more frustrating that those just don't exist. There's the split screen actions which were great last year but they don't seem to do much as far as address stage manager stuff yeah i think it's i mean stage man i've seen from other people saying even just how stage manager works has still been changing throughout the betas so they might need to let that settle before they automate it also because yeah. otherwise they'll just have to change that as, for as sure well. so when you eventually upgrade to a new ipad either this year next year or the year after um, stage manager and external displays. I mean, how do you think that'll kind of affect how you work? I mean, like you, you could, yeah, having like an iPad beneath your main display where you can touch it and then like have push it to the a bigger display to work on it there. Like, th- will that be enticing for you eventually? I think so. I'm definitely, I'm very interested because I, I'm also a big universal control user right now. Um, and so even just recently, I was testing having my... So I have an iPad stand on the right of my mm-hmm. monitor. Um, and then I also just recently got a second monitor on the left. And so what I did was, instead of using an iPad, I have a MacBook Air, actually. And so I put that on the iPad stand and was using the MacBook Air with the monitor. And then the Mac mini is just on that second display then. Yeah. And so I can, I can use both computers simultaneously because universal control works across both, but it's essentially what I would do with the iPad also is have that on the display, plug that into the monitor. And then the Mac mini is just on this one screen to the left. Um, I'll, I like definitely need to do a whole video about this because it's, <laughs> it's gets, especially with, uh, I use like an iPad mini too. And then it's like the mouse can move across all four of those, <laughs> outlets, which is pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. but I mean, I've been using stage manager on the MacBook air and I do think it'll be big. I mean, especially I don't, I kind of only have a MacBook air because the M one iPad pro didn't do more last year. And so I did get a Mac to have around the house so that I could just do Mac type things um, and also get the M1 for it. Or I guess I have an M1 
uh, Mac mini also, but just being able to work flexibly on, cause I've been doing a lot of web development stuff, mm-hmm. my um, website and so that stuff is, that's a bit it's trickier on, on the iPad. <laughs> yeah. But the, even just having multiple displays and stuff like that can be um, big, but definitely I think the stage manager stuff is going to bring that iPad rather than being the second computer on my desk. It'll be the first one and the Mac will be the second one that I use to like record this or do a live stream. Yeah. But otherwise I probably won't need otherwise. So right. I, and ultimately that's when it's really going to start to push on like, are the web apps equivalent on iPad or do they have a full iPad app also? And things like that, because that's, that is where I struggle with iPad still. And admittedly, sometimes it's like I use Airtable and just being able to interact with that a little bit better on the Mac or both at the same time sort of thing uh, across platform and things like that is that's where I'm getting into too. So yeah, some of the website stuff has been getting a bit better with the more resolution option and iPad OS. So, mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah, it, that's it great. Display more content. Some sites are now working that weren't before. So that's kind of interesting with that. Hmm. Tweet. Uh, I see. Cause it is like, they think the screen is too small basically. Yes. Yeah, um, like uh, that is... the biggest example I have is of Apple's own Podcast Connect being utterly broken. Um, if you had any kind of split screen instance, it had to be like a full screen instance That's out of 12.9. If you had two thirds, it just you couldn't access parts of the interface. <laughs> and now I can in the two thirds mode. Well, especially <laughs> doing my own web de- development, I guess I definitely understand that side of it a lot more. And yeah. the complexity of all of those screen sizes is it's like, <laughs> admittedly, <laughs> I don't think my website is like perfectly optimized for all of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'll got to I'll have to get uh, a new M1 iPad for testing purposes only for the website. Yes. That that makes sense. Yeah. So you you have the current mini. What's your current like iPad setup? Um, I've got the whole spread of back in 2019 the 12.9. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the 2020 iPad, which I definitely kind of regret as an 11 inch um okay. to because re- i I basically did an I- either or cycle for a while where i had like the original ipad pro yeah and then i got an 11 inch because i wanted to know what both was like then i upgraded the big one and then i upgraded the small one and then i got the mini and then i was like maybe i should hold off <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah well it's clearly that's part of it. it's like maybe now i can't afford that m1 as much because i freaking bought three of these ipads already yeah and it's like just like why do, what am i doing at that point um i mean it's definitely like super interesting to understand what that's really like and i think having all of these and understanding which one works best especially for shortcuts and yeah. across the line and now i mean universal control is a godsend for this because it does actually make them more useful and i can use them in more yeah, contexts I mean, you could have three iPads just next to each other and the Mac mini just driving them as a, a pointer and keyboard between all three. Of Pretty them. much. It's <laughs> like, it, it actually is super feasible and it's, it's like, I'll just like put on a YouTube video on the mini and then go over to the iPad pro to do something and back to the Mac all with the same keyboard or mouse. And yeah. that really, that experience is just super natural now. And it, I almost never have any issues except for like beta stuff. But even then, this beta cycle, they made sure they the non beta and beta stuff works with universal control, which is amazing. So, yeah, that's I'm um, I've just <laughs> they're like, let's make sure it works probably for their own sakes, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> testing all that, they're like, God, this sucks. Yeah, the thing <laughs> I most want about it uh, with the mini is to have an M1 chip in there because that would be the ultimate yeah. external display device. You have the big external display. And then you can use it in clamshell mode potentially with the touch ID sensor on the side there. I mean, it would just be brilliant. I feel like that is like a dream, but it also like is a dream. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like iPad still there. a tiny. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like it just doesn't have as much room for the all the power. Yeah. I mean, like they might do it one day, um, but just totally. I mean, I think that's what I almost like. There was like a trend of on especially YouTube of like, oh, the iPad can like totally do it all now and like the minis and stuff and having this like iPad only setup and like that's super I mean now the with stage manager is super feasible, but I think the mini too is like 
That is like a little too good to be true to be, be so to get that to full one in there. Yeah. Memory swapping and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. But it brought just to be honest, it's like last time they didn't update it for like over five years. So I feel like they'd have to wait until like everything got to there. <laughs> yeah. The thing that gives me hope is the mini is most closely modeled after the iPad Air as far as its specs. It, it tries to match that as much as it can. Mm-hmm. So maybe they'll eventually do that. So we'll see. Anyways. <laughs> So the Mac has um, shortcuts now, and it had a bit of a rocky launch. I'm curious, where is that today, and what's the Mac version of shortcuts? What kind of place does that have in your kind of like shortcuts life? Yeah, I mean, it definitely was very buggy. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with their transition to Swift UI, where basically almost everything ran fine. But when you're trying to rearrange uh, actions and things like that, it would just basically not understand where the action is. And it's like where it's moving in the flow is like three inches from where you're clicking. (laughs) And so you have to have this whole like meta understanding of what's happening. Um, And I think, I mean, just to be fair to like, I am the kind of person who's going to push this to the extreme. Yes. And so like a lot of sync issues and memory issues happen for me that almost nobody else is going to experience. But I also think it, it really hampered my ability to just natively adopt the platform. Like it's still, I mean, it's freezing right now as I'm using it. Um, But like just it, moving as fast as I want to has been the problem, not like Hmm. the other, like there is a lot of stuff that I still could do. Um, and I think because it, it was in a pretty rough shape, I really didn't get the chance to like test it to the degree that I wish I could, because I was spending the time dealing with the effects of the bugs. Like I had my sync stuff all get blown up many times and just stuff not working at all or, and there's definitely been some quality control issues there. So I think that's been pretty difficult, but also shortcuts for Mac as a whole is just amazing. And bringing it to the, I mean, for most people, I do think do tend to like do more work on their Mac, not, and maybe this is sacrilege to say on the (laughs) podcast, (laughs) but like, that's the whole like argument exists because a lot of people are like not believers or something. And so being able to automate things on your Mac a lot better than something like even automator literally it does exactly what automator did in almost every way uh, i mean not every way just to be clear that's why i said almost, the one because... the one thing i really hope they bring over from automator one day is record me do something and let me do that on the ipad oh, yeah. just record, that it records me huge. doing something on the ipad and then i can fast forward it like a thousand x like bring that over. i feel like that could come in the next couple of years like yeah. I feel like even I I think from the way that they're laying out the ability to add actions, which we'll talk about later, of uh, um, just needs to happen for some more groundwork because they were like, this is the future of automation, not the present. And so I feel like once we get to that point, I'm waiting for them to follow up on that line for sure. Um, but that would be uh, amazing. Right. But I think just in terms of, especially for people who did use shortcuts in, in workflow, being able to do all of that stuff already on your Mac and a lot of apps that were supported in workflow and shortcuts area are the type of apps that were cross platform too. So there is a ton of functionality on the Mac already. And then even new things like Pixelmator and um I just saw Acorn came out with their own photo editing actions for shortcuts or um the people who make uh Rogue Amoeba who makes like quick uh audio hijack and yeah. things like that. Um they've been adding different automations. So that's it's been super interesting and just with uh, last year, too, we got a lot of file things. And so that's a lot of what people end up doing on their Mac. Um, so a lot of those capabilities have just been really great to have a cross platform for me. Like, that's sure. the most exciting part is everything I ever did for the last six years now, now works on my Mac, too. For me, the biggest thing is how do I actually use all this stuff? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the Mac just has a whole different paradigm. Right. And so I think that's been super interesting to figure out. And I even only realized a little while ago, it's like I've been using this for, because it was so broken, for really less than seven months or something like that. Um, so there's still tons more exploring to do. But 
I'm into, I have probably 3,000 shortcuts on my stream deck. And so I have a button for every single <laughs> shortcut that I can just access right here on my desktop, which is awesome. That's like a dream, I feel like. And yeah. sometimes I still don't even appreciate that I have it. Right. Um, or like the menu bar and is a really nice way to run shortcuts or just um, the Mac in general has some more ability to run stuff in the background. Like mm -hmm. shortcuts has a command line utility. So the stream deck really just tells, uh, just runs a shell script that says do this with shortcuts. Um, it just does tell shortcut to do it actually. So like I get really shortcuts is like a front end for all of this automation stuff. That's always been possible on the Mac too. Um, so I've been fun having fun playing around with all that and also bringing it back to my iPad too. And, learning from there not like obviously mac specific stuff right. but just kind of the difference for me i think there was a whole lot of like can i do the ipad or can i use the ipad for real work or is it the mac and for me it's really can i use shortcuts and so like now the mac i can do more on the mac now than i could before because i have shortcuts on it and it's always been true with ipad and now i really can just do something on any platform that i come on to with shortcuts so come across with shortcuts so i think that's super exciting yeah. and i think it'll bring the ipad into that professional space as well because as shortcuts people set up automation as on an, Mac, yeah. you can then use that stuff on ipad when you're on the go totally like i'm seeing a lot of mac people discover ipad now and what they can do with it because the whole ecosystem has gotten stronger and so i think that's that's a huge win overall yeah for sure um, so before we dive into iPad OS 16, I just want to touch briefly on kind of the last ditch efforts of 15.4 and the sure. updates they made before, uh, you know, between the last time we've spoken now. And one of the big ones is the ability to kind of hide those notifications that would run every single time a personal or home automation yeah. ran. <laughs> that was such a little tweak but something that i think made everyone just so happy i think that particular change i still have yet to fully like integrate into my life because i think i really have held off on automations because because of the <laughs> kind of person that i am i would just use so many and it would get really annoying and so yeah, like PTSD. It, it, yeah <laughs> totally i already have um like notification blindness, I feel like is something I've said before where it's just like I get too many notifications. And so shortcuts that probably came from shortcuts itself. Um, because it is just like changing your watch face and things like that are all things that I mean, they actually have native features now. Yeah. Um in iOS 16 for that, which is great because I mean, I guess it was only mostly the notification that bothered me, but it could always sometimes it could fail with shortcuts too. Mm -hmm. So that would be um you're like expecting that and it didn't work. But I do think I think the what, to be honest, just going back to the Mac part is like they didn't bring automations to the Mac this year, which I thought they would do after not having it the first year. And so I think I want to have automations across platform and that's when I'll really be able to like truly integrate it because right now it kind of would require me to specifically choose an iPhone or iPad to be able to do that. And I do work across platform almost yeah. all the time now. Um, but I think it's still, it is like a huge win and I, I'm excited to dig into that more it's also like a statement from apple that they trust us a bit more yeah exactly i think shortcuts originally i mean i know for sure there have been problems because of automations and because people didn't know what was happening and so they added that stuff for good reason and i think they worked it out slowly over time to be able to add those levels of it's more permission level in the shortcut now rather than the automation itself um so I think that's where that stuff is good. But yeah, totally being able to just run a shortcut at any time of day without being notified and having it just happen. Mm -hmm. It's like I literally still I'm I, so I was going to say I uh, I just did a big shortcuts catalog launch. And so I was really focused on that right when this came out. And so I basically didn't have time to get to it yet. And so that's why like that being possible and true is like not even in my brain yet and i i really need to adopt that more i just um did a stream with rosemary orchard and she was talking about how almost every shortcut that she has gets run 
partially by push cut too, but yeah. um, it, it gets run for her instead of triggering it manually like I do with my stream deck. And so I'm like, maybe I should do more of that because at, at a certain point it's going to, I need a better interface to understand which short automations have run though. Like they do tell you, mm-hmm. but if I'm, if I have 35 of those in it, a, a big problem I have with automations is you can't name them. And so when it yes. runs, you don't know what run, what ran and what's going on. And like, just add a title and description to automations and I'd be so much further with them. But instead it's like, I have like 45 already and I don't, looking at the list, I have to go into each one, one by one to understand what it even does. Yeah, something I ran across, I've been getting into automating my uh, air, or my um, window air, air conditioning, as well as window fans. Mm-hmm. And I had one set up based on just time. It's like, it's 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 two o'clock, turn that stuff off. And I had another one set up based on temperature. And I forgot to turn one of them off. <laughs> and you're like, why is this, why is my AC turning off or off? Totally. It's like, yeah. what's going on? So I think that's also the tricky part is automations really do require another level of this works exactly right. And I think with the degree of me using shortcuts, I just know when I want to use one and it's not a perfect time or condition for yeah. it. It's a context that changes constantly. And I just I just do so many different, just doing blogging and podcasting and live streams and videos. I'm just switching so much that yeah. I don't have that like perfect schedule or whatever too that I think would, would help with it. But I also, I think it, it is the automation thing. And so I, I need to test it a little bit more because I'm sure it's, it's something that it's just like going through all 3000 of my shortcuts and trying to add automation for them just takes time. So I think yeah. I did, I have like hit this scale problem where just testing 45 different automation types that you can do with all the different parameters. It's like, that'll take me like a month or something, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I do. And I love it. So like, I'm actually super excited to do that more. And I still need to test this part out particularly because yeah. having automations truly run in the background and not every, it's not, it's mostly just the notification telling you what, they didn't change any like the Bluetooth thing, um, right? But I, I think there's still there's there should be ways to get around that. Uh, hopefully in the future. Yeah, for sure. So, um, playback destinations is another action they added in, or the first action we're going to talk about that they added. And I'm curious how this kind of works when you're moving around in the world. Does yeah. It, like, remember, here's all the stuff. Is it basically HomeKit stuff that's a playback destination there, or is Bluetooth in the mix, or? Um, yeah, it does Bluetooth. It's basically uh, the control center function where you go and change like the output of okay. from your phone to your speaker or something like that, or the TV or a Bluetooth device. So, um, but so they've they've always had set playback destination, but they just added parameters to it so it can be add playback destination and remove. And so the big thing. Like you could always switch from one HomePod to another mm-hmm. with shortcuts, but you couldn't pair two HomePods together or remove uh, one from the okay. pair or add three and then remove one later yeah. and then kind of switch in between. I've had, I set up a whole set of shortcuts so that basically one is like play everywhere. And so it picks all my HomePods. One is like upstairs and downstairs because I have different speakers mm-hmm. there and I usually don't want it. I want it in one or the other, not necessarily always. And then I also have like a set so I can walk in between the house and like add it as I'm going and stuff like that. That's cool. Um, Yeah. You can even have like when you tap like an icon, your home screen to ask it, you know, what speakers do you want to play on everywhere? Or um, you could have different app icons depending on um, that as well. Totally. And just like, focus modes when you're switching in between them it could like play it in your office or um nfc tags could be a good one too uh, i think it's kind of it's basically just like with homepod you've never been able to you can make a speaker group and you can tell siri to make a speaker group but you can't really change those easily mm-hmm. and so now you can automate that and to any degree that you want with shortcuts and so that's cool In this quick break, I want to let you know about another awesome Apple-focused podcast to add to your queue, the Mac Geek Gab podcast. This show is in its 17th year of providing tips, cool stuff found, and answers to your questions about anything and everything Apple. 
Hosts Dave Hamilton and John F. Braun take time each and every week to actually provide tech support to as many listeners as possible, while learning at least five new things weekly themselves. The great part is that they always make sure each answer has actionable tips with easy instructions for listeners too. For example, if you press and hold the mute button during a call on your iPhone or even your iPad, it will put that call on hold. Another awesome one is that you can turn on or off your focus mode on your iPad or iPhone by simply swiping down to control center and simply tapping that little icon in the focus section. I find myself learning something new every episode, which is incredible. If you use an iPhone, a Mac, an iPad, an Apple Watch, an Apple TV, or are simply a technology enthusiast, you're going to love learning more about your technology with your two new favorite geeks over at MacGeekGab. Get your questions answered and have some fun along the way. Visit MacGeekGab.com or search for MacGeekGab on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't get caught without having MacGeekGab in your rotation. But with that, here's the rest of my discussion with Matthew Casanelli. Enjoy. How far down the HomePod rabbit hole have you gone? How many do you have in the house? Um, I've got two of the big ones and then two minis i think um i got one for my office and one for the living room and then the mini for the kitchen and and eventually another one for the bedroom gotcha um yeah so i feel like not i didn't go like hog wild and get (laughs) all the large ones at once um but i definitely got one for like my parents and stuff because i wanted them to experience how good it sounds and how easy it is just to use your voice too yeah um but like I told my mom about this idea and she was like, I kind of want to go get a second HomePod just to play around with that kind of thing. And I was like, wow, uh, I just influenced my mom. <laughs> well, it's kind of wild. Like I remember growing up and having the multi audio setup was multi thousand uh, thousands of dollars to have that. Setup. Totally. And that was just like accessible. I think that's why like so many of these things like this iPad with the stage manager. It's like we have like the coolest possible technology in the world right now. And it's like, oh, yeah, it was in iOS 15.4 as a feature update to one action. And I'm like, you can do this cool stuff. And they're, <laughs> Apple, Apple's not like telling you really. And so I think that's, I mean, I love to be able to do it, but I just want people to understand that it's like, especially with shortcuts, you can really customize all of that to a degree. And it just comes from like that HomePod thing just comes from that one action. Yeah. Yeah, I do appreciate um, the 50.4. They had a big, long release notes about it, which is very on Apple-like to just like detail out all the little things that they tweaked. Totally. I, I basically asked them to do that because <laughs> we've been, we've all been wanting... I think that's been the problem with shortcuts is it's like, when did this get added? I didn't know that. <laughs> like, unless I found uh, even that feature, I don't think was the headline... I think it was the automations thing. And then I was like, oh, actually, this other part is really cool. And I've wanted this for years. And like, I'm like, I feel like I'm the only person who knows about it right now. <laughs> That's, I gotta do, I gotta make a bit. I've, I literally have like a whole script written out for that one. So I yeah. think you talking about the home speaker setup is totally the vibe of like, I've always wanted that since I was a kid. And now you can walk around with your phone and transfer the music from speak. Like you can do all of this a little bit with the handoff and stuff. Yeah, you can even have sensors. Like, there's the room sensors that a lot of companies have for HomeKit. I'm sure you could have automations based on if you if you if you were if someone's in the room, switch it to there or something. I think the only problem right now is that home automations don't actually run oh, your phone shortcuts. Right. Yeah, they run HomeKit shortcuts, yeah. and so it's got a limited. So, like, that's also something that they should change at some point or. I mean, that's where like air. T- I made another video at one point about air tags as a um, local NFC type thing, where if there was an air tag under my desk, when I got close enough to it, it could then run the shortcut on my phone to play to mm. switch to that speaker yeah, and cool. things like that. So I, f- I still want to see that. I feel yeah. like they still could. And then um, tags were added to reminder actions, which was, I think tags were brand new to reminders last year. And I'm starting to use reminders uh, and tags, especially for the smart list, so you can create out of a single list, which I find pretty helpful. Um, do you do much with the tagging and reminders in general? 
Um, I haven't yet, and I think some of it has been because they didn't have this right when I was trying to play around with it a lot, because <laughs> they added s- tags to reminders in the beginning of yeah. iOS 15, and so I usually test the stuff in detail over the summer, and then they didn't add the ability to actually automate it with shortcuts until halfway through. I think in general, also, I always really like reminders until I'm like, what do I need to do today? And I I struggle to probably because I use it way too intensely. I just like see a giant list of reminders and I don't see the tasks. I just like something about it. Maybe it's the visuals in the today list. It doesn't like color the task or anything by the list that you used. And I think some of that might help me. Um, I just I just see a bunch of overdue chores is usually what it is. <laughs> also, I think I use it mostly for personal stuff. Yeah. And so that's also why, like, once I try to mix in work things, it kind of gets I'm like, oh, I need a vacuum plus do this writing. And I, I kind of it's harder to prioritize because, like, I'm going to do the vacuuming. Right. And I, I don't know, like my work stuff is a little more malleable. Um, yeah. But I think also. In iOS 16, they just added a open smart list action. And so they didn't have that kind of functionality. And even that doesn't work with the um, custom smart lists that you have. And so that's something else that I pretty much need with shortcuts is the ability to get to all this stuff right. and access it. And so I think if they add a little bit more to the shortcuts thing, I might be able to use it. I got to, I really, it's like one of those things where I need to go all in on it and 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 also account for just like my mad systems of yeah. like is the task how detailed do, do you do subtasks or is just the task the project thing that links to the notes where you have subtasks or something like that's where i get yeah. i get all in on one system and then i'm like oh this doesn't work i'll just go back to things yeah. um yeah, but i think it's are nice and reminders i use them occasionally what I really appreciate about it, I mentioned this on another episode, uh, is the fact that I can have a shared reminder list with somebody. And then if I want to complicate it up a bit, I can add tags, which will just automatically put this one list in the like seven different lists to like make it make more sense to me, where we have just mm-hmm. you know one shared list and then I can kind of add metadata to make it more um, do, manageable. Do tags get shared? They do. Oh. Interesting. I think. Um, Actually, I don't know on that one. I add them. I'm not sure if they show up on the other <laughs> They just see all your I, tags. Yeah, I um, should. Yeah, I'm not sh- I have to check that out now that you mentioned that. <laughs> totally. Yeah, because it's been super, super useful to, to be able to make these smart lists out of a single list, you know. Yeah, and I think, honestly, the other half of it is that they just added tag support in the Notes app in Shortcuts this year. And so... I think what I really need to do is evaluate exactly how I use tags versus folders slash lists slash whatever metaphor, the single yeah. item thing, because I do struggle with, I have writing and sh- and shortcuts and videos and live streams. Should those be lists? And then I tag them differently or are those the tags? And then I have real lists of just projects. Right. But then like every single task is tagged video. And so like (laughs) that kind of balance, I think I've gone in it. I did so much. uh, It's it's like taxonomy is the term for all this stuff. And I did so much of this with shortcuts and my website and tagging shortcuts as for the menu bar and and getting into there. And so I, I get again down the rabbit hole with this with my personal tasks. And at a certain point, I just need to do the work. <laughs> I don't want to tag it to that degree. And so I think that's where notes plays more of a an interesting role. But then I'm also like, I'm really into craft, which hooks directly into itself instead of using tags. Um, and so like, I think it's it's like a thing where this is what I've wanted for so long, but I wanted it for so long and didn't have it that I moved on to a different system. Right. And now we have it, and it's like I have the all, everything to play with, but not a specific use case. So I think um, I'm I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah. Reminders is finally good. Like it took them like however many years <laughs> it's been since. Exactly. The, the it's pretty. It's iOS sick. 7? I feel like it's an iOS seven app. Is it or six? Maybe I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but even, uh, they have templates now too. And so I think, 
I think it's mostly, I, I have yet to do a stream about the iOS 16 notes and reminder stuff, because um, some of it's been a little bit buggy too, but I think it'll probably play itself out when I get into it, really. And uh, a lot of times I, when it, when it really is your to-do list change and that big project that every nerd undergoes where they, they're like, I'm going to change systems, that's not the right time to actually play around with tags and experiment because you you also just need to get your stuff done again. So it's like, I think that's where the playing around with it on live streams and trying to automate it along with the notes app and how, like, do the notes tags match the reminders tags? And can I use that all together? That's kind of a, I need to create this whole beast. Or And also know, I'm curious for you, Tim, or any of your listeners too, like, what did you, what do you actually use? Because that's part of it is I'll go all the, t- all, all the way to town on it. But if, I know what's just more realistic for people too. That's always good. <laughs> I, I've been an uh, OmniFocus user since day one. Then this summer, I decided to finally give reminders a shot, and I'm I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah so I'm all in on reminders right now. OmniFocus is kind of on hold, uh, and we'll see what happens when the OmniFocus uh, four rolls out and that's finalized. Sure. I just got the the. It is tempted though. I just got the beta test flight for OmniFocus four on the iPhone lock screen with the little widget. So, uh, yeah, that <laughs> stuff is all. I mean, that's I have uh, reminders on all of my lock screen widgets right now because yeah. that's the only thing that you can really do. Now, yeah. I will say the reminders so, app for the Apple Watch is just so good. It's like, yeah, it's I think that's why I. I will always use reminders because I definitely use it to capture information and then process it out into shortcuts and through into other apps. I think just like that part even adds another weird, like sometimes it's a landing ground and sometimes it's not permanent. And so kind of that whole blend of things, I just, I just do too much sometimes. And so <laughs> I, I, <laughs> exactly. So just trying to find a simple solution too that's like shareable is also a lot of times my goal. And but sometimes I need to go down the rabbit hole and back out. I'm curious how the sharing <laughs> API will affect task managers. Like will OmniFocus and things add that sharing API so you can have shared task lists and these these other apps besides reminders now. Yeah. I even forgot about that. So that's that's a whole other realm too. That sounds great. Yeah, it's fascinating. I think I do think we're in a weird like this is, it seems meta for just in the middle of this point about iOS 15.4, but I think going forward I do think there's a lot of new f- level of functionality that is going to be present in these apps that we always just didn't think it could do it. And yeah. I think that I stuff is going to be awesome. Has talked for years about having a desire for collaboration and I think they may finally be able to do it with this new API. So we'll see like yeah. there could be a whole crop of new collaboration apps, which could be interesting. Yeah. And I think especially going back to reminders, I always come back to it because everybody has it. And that's huge for somebody making shortcuts that are just trying to help people understand how you can use shortcuts. Like reminders is a pretty universal thing of just assigning yourself to take the trash out or whatever like that. And if you can aud- you can just add tags and automate that process a little bit with shortcuts, you can actually get a super fancy task management system. Like you're saying, you're able to re- potentially replace OmniFocus with reminders now. Yeah. So like that's a, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 grown up quite a bit. Um, so uh, I work got a little update around the same time, and yeah. um, I'm curious with like live text. Could you now like? take a picture of like a receipt and have it extract some stuff to put it in a spreadsheet or it seems like that might get a little yeah janky because you have to clean up the live text capture and make sure it's prob- like, yeah, yeah probably not just i mean it's like you could do the same stores receipt and you could automate you'd have to like have the same one every time sort of thing right. um so i feel like that in particular like going into numbers is what you're referring to yeah uh, i don't think but what you could do is have a series of prompts with shortcuts that then puts the data into us. Yeah, machine. yeah. So you, a Siri, um, or you tap a, a little icon and ask, like, what'd you buy? You type it in, how much did it cost? And, you know, yeah. put it in for you. I think uh, a lot of these, so they added them for pages, numbers, and keynotes. And they basically, they had some of these on iPad before. And a lot of them were built, I think, not using the same APIs. And so they brought it to the Mac and standardized it. 
So you can just open documents, create templates, and then for the keynote, you can go into show presentation mode. And then for numbers, you can add to a spreadsheet and things like that. So it's a lot of stuff they should have kind of always had. Um, yeah. And then I think it also just sets the groundwork to do more with that next time too. Cause I think that's, I think that's been a, a big thing is like, they're filling out a lot of actions that a lot of these should have kind of already had, but it wasn't necessarily also like the biggest priority. And then now I think going ahead with iOS 16 is when it's like, we, we will start to see the deeper functionality. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, for spreadsheets, does Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, are there any other spreadsheets that you can automate in this way of like adding to it? Um, I mean, I've been doing it with Airtable Air for se- one, yeah. seven years. Right. Um, Notion has gotten uh, Notimate from Alex Hay, who makes Toolbox Pro, can add stuff to Notion. Uh, I think Shortcutify can add to spreadsheet, uh, Google Sheets, and okay. I think there's a couple others. Um, so through third-party tools, but not natively. Okay. I think a lot of this hasn't been functionally possible, really, until this year. And so I think there's a lot of developer changes um, that I didn't even honestly understand weren't... It, it was possible, but I think really hard to set up or or just some basic, like, filtering, like, all the find actions and shortcuts where you can add, like, filters to. Mm-hmm. Developers just couldn't do that before so that stuff is going to change so um let's move on to ipad and ios 16 and i guess to start are there any just broad statements about this year's kind of focus of the shortcuts team what have they been kind of working on broadly speaking with the you know the actions and the new app and itself yeah um i think so there's kind of it all does come back to app shortcuts, which is the new kind of headline feature for sort of everybody. But um, for developers, it's called the App Intense API. And so it's basically an advanced version of kind of what Siri Intense were for developers to integrate with Siri. Mm -hmm. And now that's kind of all one in the same with shortcuts. So basically every new app that wants to integrate with Siri adopts app shortcuts And then shortcuts are automatically created for you in the shortcuts app by name for each of those functions that it has. And then you can basically speak to Siri and use an app's shortcuts without even ever having opened the shortcuts app in the first place. Um, So it's kind of their solution for Siri in a lot of ways where they just like add every you can, as the developer, you can add every functional, every shortcut under the sun and then, name it so that people can kind of get the term right. And it's kind of wild to some degree. Um, I'm like, I wrote a piece on iMore a while ago uh, where I was like, I'm curious how people will react to this because I do think a lot of people prefer the Google Assistant style of like, hey, just do this in this app. And having to get like the trigger phrase, I think is going to be, might be controversial Um, just because it kind of, it's like, let's just, think of every possible idea. And then I do think there'll be like a disambiguation. So it can like, if you get it slightly wrong, it'll figure it out. Um, But it kind of, I can't really test this yet either. So that's why I think why I'm, I'm fascinated because part of it for me too, is I have so many shortcuts that support or so many apps that support, support shortcuts. If all of those make like 50 shortcuts, I'm going to have like 10 billion shortcuts in my app. Um, (laughs) So I don't even know how that's going to work, but and just how Siri is going to take a phrase and look through all of those at once. Um, yeah. I, we'll see. Um, that part's definitely interesting. Yeah, it's weird how they're just like in your app. It's not like this like gated off area where you like approve them to be <laughs> added. There, there is. Kind of, yeah. So there is an app shortcuts section. And okay. then now you have like my shortcuts. Um, and then if you want to add other steps, you can basically like, it's kind of like an in-app gallery Mm -hmm. for every app that you have. And then you can add from there to your custom shortcuts and add more steps and change the name and things like that. So I think the biggest thing is that I think uh, Federico made this point, uh, Federico Vitici of Mac Stories is just when you open shortcuts, it won't be empty. It'll have shortcuts for every single app that you use already. Um, And so that's going to be huge because 
you don't have to really learn how to use shortcuts, the scripting tool in order to get a lot of value from Siri and the shortcuts app. And then also just setting them up. You already have those first steps there. You don't have to look in the action editor and add them and understand that that's even possible. So I think that's been a huge barrier for entry. Even I remember myself, it took me a while until I actually looked through every single action and understood what shortcuts could do that I understood what shortcuts could do because otherwise it's like this nebulous, can it do all these things? It's like, no, it's not in there sort of thing. (laughs) Um, So I think that having more of those things already shown to you will help you understand what's possible. And then maybe you can start to see those connections and making more intense workflows from that. I kind of hope... I haven't built Tesla uh, like you because we're waiting until the app updates come out. But I kind of hope the Apple Watch has a little app shortcuts area because that's one platform where I think a lot of people open the app. It's like, uh, I can't do anything here. What do you mean? The watch app? Yeah, the or... watch app. Yeah. As, as in terms of like setting the... What do you... Wait, like, sorry. I just like I'd love if developers, if they have shortcuts that are pretty relevant to be run on the watch itself to mm, make those like a like, watch show open. gallery sort of yeah is make those show yeah. the shortcuts app for watch i'm not sure actually it's a good point like if a developer can set a shortcut a sh- to show on apple watch probably not i would assume I don't think so yet yeah until i add it to my collection right um i do think like that sounds like a feature that they probably never thought of to be honest of like just put at the bottom of the shortcuts app for Apple Watch, put some suggested shortcuts from those app shortcuts. Um, I, I can see that being useful because um, it is hard to understand. What do I do here? What's good from Watch? Yeah, and yeah what it's the hardest work platform well. to kind of I think to figure out what what's most applicable here. Yeah, um, I did a. Sorry, I feel like I'm plugging all my armor article. I, they have been having me do cover a lot of the basics. I did yeah. one for Apple Watch too, and like health stuff is great or like single data entry things are nice too um like you can save to the notes app from the watch even though there's no notes app Whoa. for watch yeah i didn't realize you could one. do that i thought that yeah that's a, out. i should i should make a your reaction that just made me think of like a, some viral tiktok did yeah. you, did you did you know <laughs> that's the most interesting thing about the watch is like there's there's no notes app. There's there's a reminders app, which is yeah. nice and rich and full featured, but we can't have a notes app. <laughs> no notes for you. It's so frustrating. Um, but even so, the other side of the app intense API is so for developers, the whole shortcuts experience used to be built through an uh, Xcode interface, and now it's all done through code. And so I've heard from a lot of developers that that's just a, a way nicer way to develop because they can test and experiment and back up their code if they need to and go back and forth and do all these other things that is they they just are developers who write in code and so using that and being able to cross-reference all the files in different like i don't know all the details but it they basically said it's way better this year than it used to be and a lot more functionality that you can like i was saying find and filter data you can build more advanced actions and then have those do more with your app also. And so that tied with like, not only can they just already be installed in there, but they're a lot better and kind of probably more what, if you, if you are a workflow user or you are a shortcuts user, like what you expect from Mm -hmm. actions that Apple does with their own apps, you should be able to do that with other apps now too. And so, yeah, in the past you had the like, do do an action on in an app, like three or four times for it to finally like show up in shortcuts. Is that totally. still going to be the behavior or is it different? Um, I think it's technically uh, the APIs are still there. So there is still like if you do something regularly, it, it can suggest that shortcut to you. Okay. I think what I, I just still don't, I haven't seen an example of it might, I would hope that it can suggest a richer action yeah. for you than just the original version of shortcuts was totally execute this one function alone mm-hmm. and don't do anything else. And then they added, now you can hook them together and now it's like a lot more parameters and then the ability to like not just create a task, but get my project lists and then create the task and do and the project lists have all this metadata, like some of that other apps could do. But I think f- even from the tools not being that flexible, some developers adopted it and some didn't. 
and now I think it's kind of a new ground of like, this is all possible. It's all better. It really benefits you for Siri. So I think this whole developer story and getting the shortcuts ecosystem stronger is going to be much better this year. Um, and I think that's something that's been sort of disappointing the last couple of years is like, you're like, why doesn't this app support shortcuts yet? Probably because it didn't necessarily make sense for them to spend the time adopting it for the return right. that they got. And so hopefully that'll be much, much higher now, which is great. I wonder if apps like Overcast can now just like, it knows about what podcast you follow in Overcast. And when you open up shortcuts, it can just give you access to all of those shows versus needing to play a certain show. To like yeah, pop totally. I wonder if it can do that now, where it can just like have more power to, to show you stuff. Uh, that's a, that's up to Marco, to be honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where like it's a good. I mean, like, just he is known as an opinionated developer, and so somebody like him who's going to be very critical of how hard shortcuts is to adopt and whether it's worth it. It's like if it can win over somebody like Marco, that's a huge win. And so like yeah. we'll see. And we got us. Let's see on Twitter if he gets to do it in the next month or so. It's like he probably would have ran into bugs. So I think it's I do think in this current cycle, developers are it's like it's still being developed also. And so I think it might take through all of iOS 16 for this to really play out in yeah. full and just how long it takes for developers to build stuff. But totally. I think it's still like you can see where the future of automation on the Mac and on all these other platforms thing is is sort of filling out and soon it's going to be like oh you can all those things you wish it could do it can now and why aren't you doing more with it so that's where i'm excited just because i'm at that edge and the second these things are available it's like let's jump on them yeah one thing i just thought of which would be an amazing shortcut is um somehow have overcast sync with out with podcast on the watch Oh yeah. Shortcuts. Okay. I thought you were gonna say with the podcast app because, like, I think oh, there that'd be are... another killer one. Yeah, because the podcast app on the watch is also pretty good. Yeah, you should be able to like feed all these into each other. Yeah, you can and... like read your current play position in episodes and have them like load up in a different app. Like, yeah, you can uh, Overcast if you. I have a shortcut that it, it does require you to know in advance the video podcast, but I watch some on YouTube and they. I will listen to it in Overcast. Yeah. And Overcast has a timestamp in the URL. And so you can convert that into seconds and then put that at the end of a YouTube link and it'll put you to that moment in the YouTube video. So if you're like, you're out on a, like listening to the podcast when you're out of the house and you get home and you want to tune into the video version, you can just like immediately. That's open really the cool. YouTube video. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, there's a number of, there's Twit and a lot of gaming podcasts have the, the video on the YouTube totally that's yeah that's a cool shortcut idea well that was the first part of my discussion with matthew castanelli my thanks again to him for his time recording this episode learn more about shortcuts over at matthewcastanelli.com and get early access to episodes of this podcast over patreon.com slash ibetpros or by subscribing in apple Podcasts. my thanks to you for your time and attention tuning in and with that i'll talk to everyone again real soon